All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome in. As everyone starts trickling in from the waiting room, let me just make sure all of our settings are good. I'm going to turn the waiting room off so people can come right in. Um, and yeah, if this is your, we like to keep the chat active or getting to know each other with these events. So if you <laughs> want to pop in the chat where you're coming from, um, it's always fun. I find it fun to see where other people are. I am in Buffalo, which was an unseasonally warm 65 degree day here. It was crazy, a little bit unsettling to be honest, but um, enjoyed the sunshine nonetheless. So um, yeah, head on over in the chat, let us know where you're coming from. And if you've come to one of these before, oh, someone from Toronto, hi, you're really close. Um, anyway, so I, Lima, Peru, cool, Los Angeles. Awesome. Great to see everyone. Um, and yeah, I'm going to dive right in because um, I know there's so much to cover here. Um, just some quick housekeeping stuff, if you don't mind keeping yourselves muted so we can have all of our ears on our wonderful presenter, Sherry, here. Um, and I will introduce her in just a moment. So Sherry Howell is from MedJet, the number one top rated air medical transport and travel security program for travelers. MedJet was the first company in the US to implement the air medical transport membership concept, the first program to add medical transport for COVID to its membership benefits. Sherry is the vice president of marketing and communications for MedJet. And I love this fun fact. Sherry also spent 15 years at MTV where she was the vice president of music and got to globe trot with rock stars. <laughs> which I'm sure that, that Sherry has, you have so many stories that oh, yeah. we'd probably all love <laughs> to hear about that, but I'm sure that would probably take more than an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, um, actually, yeah. Sworn to secrecy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just, we'll just leave it at that then. Um, all right. Uh, I will let you just take it away then with that super quick introduction, because I know you have a lot to cover. I know everyone's going to have a ton of questions. Um, it, you could, everyone can, again, take advantage of the chat, um, as you're going, um, you can, as she's talking, you can leave your questions in the chat. If you just want to type question in all caps, I'm going to be like compiling all those questions. So then we can dive straight into the question and answer um from there so we can make sure to kind of have everyone's questions answered so i am going to keep it to like just about an hour to respect everyone's time um so yeah the sooner you get your questions in then the sooner we can just start going with that and uh and uh make this a really um impactful hour for everyone so yeah take it away sherry all right. Um, I work at MedJet. We are an air medical transport travel security membership program. Um, today's uh, presentation is on safer travel. Um, our MedJet Horizon membership, which is security response on top of the medical transport, is currently our fastest growing membership. Um, we've got everybody upgrading to it, and it is blown out sales records for probably it was 14, I think it's 15 or 16 months in a row now. I should know that I'm marketing. Um, so we know that we know that security is a huge concern for people right now. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right in. And these are a lot of these are just my personal tips um, and you know, professional knowledge. So here we go. Safer travel in 2024. Uh-oh. Uh, the number one thing that you can do is at the advice of our chief operating officer, think about every worst case scenario and make plan for every single one of them. That requires a lot of preparation. Um, we, I looked up the top six travel emergencies, medical issues, and this is courtesy of generally medical issues. Um, one in 30 trips actually ends in a medical emergency. So knowing how you would handle that, um, what kind of coverages you have and what their limitations are is important. Vehicle accidents and breakdowns count for 22% of travel emergencies, lost stolen belongings, travel delays. We're not going to get much into that. You know, they consider it an emergency, but I don't consider it a security emergency. Illness and other emergencies back home, again, travel insurance um, annoying but not a security risk natural disaster that is add to that 
all the security risks that we all keep hearing about and everybody's worried about these days, which is terrorist activities, political instability and geopolitical tension, civil unrest, lots of protests, demonstrations, lots of riots happening all over the place, not fun to get stuck in. Uh, and, and knowing what to do in that instance is a good idea. Kidnapping for ransom, wrongful detention, theft, uh, theft fraud, scams, sexual harassment and assault, cyber security threats, the list goes on and on. We recently ran a poll, um, that's actually a typo, we sent it out to over 90,000 uh, members and it showed that 99% of them are concerned about safety, 57% are more concerned than they were last year. That's not surprising. So we're gonna focus on staying safe. Matt and here's my, um, on the Nomadic Matt website, they've got tips on how to stay safe and they're really solid. Research your destination, um, find out you know what is what areas are safe, what transportation is safe. Um, shoot, I got to move this window over a little bit so I can actually read my stuff. Uh, learn the emergency numbers for your destination um, and the location of your nearest hospital and embassy. The emergency numbers are not necessarily 411 in every country. They can often vary by city. Um, so you should know those before you go. Follow the embassy at your destination on Twitter in the case of an emergency. Um, and, and they also tweet out stuff about uh, blockades, about demonstrations, anything that you might um, run into locally. It's a really good source. Um, and they're all on Twitter. Leave a complete itinerary and copies of your passport with somebody at home that you trust. Take printed copies for yourself. If you lose them while traveling, this is really important. Um, trust your gut instincts. Don't stay any place you're uncomfortable. Don't do things you're uncomfortable with and don't talk to people who seem to be fishing for information, especially about whether you're traveling alone or not. Um, it's a lot that, that don't share that kind of information. Check in at scheduled times with family or friend. I know like I'm bad at it, but it's really important that you be diligent about keeping a schedule, even if it's a quick text. Because if somebody doesn't hear from you for 12 hours, don't, you know, you don't want the boy who cried wolf thing where um, just if, if you disappear for more than 12 hours and you haven't checked in, then somebody should start looking for you. Um, watch your alcohol consumption, intoxication levels. Always watch your drinks and know your sources. Dummy wallets are great. Secure and hide your valuables. Don't carry large amounts of cash. Use secure bank ATMs only. These are, you know, common sense, but um, honestly, the 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 dummy wallets, they make a lot of like really good garb now. Um, bras that you can stuff stuff in. I bought I bought my friend the the guy's underwear with the little zip because the the we took him on a trip to he's not a good traveler. We took him on a trip to Buenos Aires with us and he decided to stick his credit card in his waistband of his underwear thinking that would be safe in case he got robbed and it fell, <laughs> it fell out. So get something with zippers, get something that could be secured. Don't be Randy. Um, uh, enroll in STEP before you go. It is the State Department's Safe Traveler Enrollment Program and it lets the embassy in the area um, know that you are in the area in case there is an emergency. Um, help uh, and and it helps family and friends get in touch um, with you in an emergency if some of the communications have gone down. They have an amazing app called the Smart Traveler app. I use this myself. You enter in what your what your itinerary is um, and it will send you real-time alerts about concerns in in your area. Um, demonstrations that are taking place. It's a really great real-time feed. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, create a disaster phone tree. Our, uh, our COO, John, is a big proponent of that. Um, it's just a series of, I call this person, this person calls these people. If you've ever had a kindergartner, you know what a phone tree is. Um, and have a family disaster meeting place designated in case you're separated at the time. Um, that something strikes. Uh, and and it's it's always good to actually have two because if your first destination, let's say that it's the hotel, if that is impeded, 
um, then you need to have a secondary location. He he's a very cautious human. He's probably got three or four. <laughs> um agree again agree on an emergency regrouping location uh set your emergency contact in your phone seems obvious but i didn't do it until two years ago so just done it especially if you get a new phone just remember to do that and then pre-program the phone numbers for the local embassies your insurance carriers 24-hour assistance hotline or you can download their app most of them have them now and for us, for MedJet members, we have an you know we have an app and a wallet card, but a lot of people also just pre-program the security line number and or the medical transport um, line uh, into their phones for quick reference, um, and make sure that you add the plus sign in front of it so that the it gets out it it dials internationally. Um, staying well, uh, research your destination. Research required or important vaccinations. Make sure you're up to date on hepatitis A, tetanus, all routine shots. Research any recommended vaccinations for your destination, dengue fever, hepatitis B. Your doctor's office probably won't have these, um, a lot of them at their specialties, but you can Google um, travel clinics in your hometown and, and find um, places to get some of the rarer uh, or more specific vaccines. Get some exercise before you go. Get in shape for all the walking you're going to do. It also helps build up your immune system. It's a really good way to, you know, to just try to stay healthy while you're traveling. Um, and you're going to be sitting a lot. So uh, packing. We recommend that people pack prescription medicine plus 50%. Split them between your carry-on and check bags. Do not rely on refilling abroad. Um, there's been, you know, shortages and also the the they're just not the same. And sometimes you can't get it refilled just due to prescriptions. Um, and if you have anything that you're that you're in question, do a little bit of research on what over-the-counter drugs are prohib prohibited in countries. You know, I travel a lot with Claritin D because I have really bad allergies. But so, and you got to be careful which countries you're taking it into. Um, basic first aids kits. This is the skinny version. You should have seen the one I sent my kid to Costa Rica with when he went down for a month. It was embarrassing. Um, antibiotic gel, cortisone cream, alcohol wipes, hand sanitizer, sunscreen. Those are all kind of the basics. Antihistamines, acetaminophen, and acid, and over the the just some diarrhea medicine, insect repellent, band-aids of all sort all of assorted sizes, elastic wrap for sprains, thermometer round tip scissors so you can actually keep them safety pins one i always carry one pair of rubber surgical gloves they're in like all the bags all my cars you just never know um and a water purification bottle or straw uh or tablets if you're going to go someplace really remote adventure travel is really big this year so we're actually doing um i'm, I'm really encouraging people to pack one of those one of those straws my favorite security things are so simple. Um, carabiners, they're about a buck on Amazon. They are great for attaching your purse or your backpack to your chair or your belt loop. Um, Baby, yoga! Yoga is no joke on the <laughs> Okay, gents. Um, doorstop alarm. Uh, even just the cheap, simple rubber ones. I actually, I always check the double doors between the rooms, but um, uh, and, I, and I did it once and was in a hotel room in New York and um, this intoxicated gentleman came stumbling into my room in the middle of the night through that adjoining door, scared, the, scared me to death. His wife was screaming, it's not the bathroom, you idiot. Um, so it, it, it did not turn out badly, but you know, those in between those doors, sometimes the maids will go through and unlock them. So check them frequently and consider just getting a stop. Um, and then uh, if I'm going remote, um, I'll take one of those, uh, one of the solar panels, just in case the phone dies. They're really lightweight if you don't have the backup storage um, or use with backup, or they're a little bit heavier. Um, if you want to have actual batteries, this, I, I, I have a bunch of these in every bag. Um, it present, it prevents juice jacking. Uh, you know, I, I tell people don't ever plug your USB cord into, uh, you know, even if you're desperate to charge your phone, just don't do it. These, the cords have four ports, um, or four conduits in the USB cord. Two of them are power, two of them are information. 
And, you know, the extraction of your phone information can be really, really, really bad if the if the USB plug is nefarious and it's been increasing in um, frequency. And so you carry these things. It actually is a, a, a conduit between it and it disables the data um, conduit. Only the electricity goes through. None of the data is shared. I, they're, they're not expensive. Get a whole bunch of them, put them in every bag. I had to plug in in the airport the other day. I could not find one of my 50 um, and I just felt dirty. I'm, I still wake up in the middle of the night, like just so mad at myself. Um, other random favorites, cheap, lightweight ponchos. That's not really a security thing. Garbage bags. I have a fear of- Oh, I didn't believe you. Stop that fist to me. I'm not going to Okay, I'm okay. sorry. I think I'm going to just remove that person if that keeps <laughs> happening. Take um, another name and come back. I like their crown stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I have a, I have a, a an unusual fear of bed bugs. Uh, so I always carry two garbage bags. I always put my luggage on them when I get into the hotel room. Another thing you can do is put them in the, um, you know, put your luggage in the bathtub. Uh, and and till I'm absolutely sure that there's nothing in there. On the bright side, I used them. I converted them into makeshift chaps when I was down in Ushuaia. My son was mortified, but my legs were so dry during my boat ride, um, and everybody was really impressed with my MacGyvering. Um, so they they come in handy. Um, the other thing is I carry a little bit of lavender oil. Um, yeah, it's good for sleep or smelly hotel rooms, but also if you do feel like your luggage has been exposed to bed bugs, um, sealing the suitcase in the garbage pail with a couple drops, there's um, something that's very toxic for bed bugs in lavender. It's used a lot for natural um, uh, natural disinfective. I like the smell of it, but that's primarily why I carry it. Um, buy travel insurance please, at least the medical component of it, and consider membership in a program like, guess what, MedJet. Um, in order, I have a little video that shows the difference between what travel insurance covers and what uh, air medical transport and travel security program like MedJet covers. So i um, going to play a video a little bit later. Uh, that should have been in there. Mm -hmm. Meredith took it out. Um, the top six travel emergencies, just going back to uh, you know what what we did before, gonna dive a little bit deeper into medical emergencies, minor non-urgent options. Um, does your home health insurance have teledoc access? If not, you know, you might want to think about enrolling in a paper session. Um, comes in really handy. Travel insurance, telemedicine, accident. If you do take out travel insurance, most of them now actually provide 24 seven telephone and video access to US like licensed US physicians. Another interesting thing that's been popping up all over Europe are these new RX shop kiosks where you go to the pharmacy, there's a teledoc kiosk, you consult with the doctor, tell them what's wrong. Um, if they wanna issue some, if they wanna write you a prescription, they do it and guess what? You turn around and you fill it right there. They're really super handy. Um, and, and I love that they've been popping up more and more. Um, medical emergencies, things that are like major urgent options, urgent care and hospitalization. This is why you research local hospitals and the local 911 numbers, right? If you did not do this research, you can ask the front desk or your host for information on the nearest and best urgent care and ER. Know this, you will most likely be required to pay 100% of the medical bills yourself and then file a claim for reimbursement from insurance. Um, be sure to keep all copies of all bills, record all payments, and some facilities may require cash payment up front prior to treatment, even in the ER. This is actually, um, this, this has happened to people that we know, and this is actually why we added a medical cash advance benefit to our MedJet Horizon membership um, of $60,000. It's a loan, but we can, you know, oftentimes get 
um, that to a hospital in an emergency more than, you know, your mom or your dad or your kid, if they don't, you know, if they're not used to wiring money, especially internationally. Um, so really think about how you or your family would handle your urgent, your really urgent needs. Hospitalization and getting home, read your travel insurance policy thoroughly, and you will see that most medevac um, I have the Amex Platinum card too, and it's it's the same thing, is to the nearest acceptable facility, um, but they will only move you further, aka move you home if it's deemed medically necessary. We have story after story. My favorite is a video on our website of a woman who landed in a um, hotel, in Ga I'm in a hospital in Gaza, and they were using cats as rodent control. So that's not, and the um, the insurance company said that that's acceptable. It's actually very common practice um, in, in some areas, but that was not acceptable to her husband. And he was very, very pleased that they had met Jet to get home. Um, to get moved to a hospital at home, regardless of medical necessity, meaning you just, you don't like the hospital, it may not be deemed medically necessary to get home. That is where a program like MedCheck comes in. We get you moved to your hospital of your choice in your home country. Most people choose hometown, but you can choose a different one um, regardless of, of medical necessity, just because you want to go home. Um, and then once you've recovered to the fullest extent possible in a foreign hospital, travel insurance, usually you know the trip interruption portion of it is usually what they use to rebook you on a commercial flight home. So uh, 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 getting moved in an air ambulance or um, you know, uh, via commercial with a critical care nurse is what our memberships do. And that gap between insurance and what we do is why we've been in business for 30 years. Um, vehicle breakdowns. Uh, the assumption is that you're driving a rental car Research what agency and car insurance um, you have before you rent and how to contact those in an emergency. Rent from a known company that has many locations. Um, if, if, you, if your car breaks down halfway between where you are, where you're going, you, you wanna be able to trade it in at another location without seriously interrupting your trip. Um, I have done this before and it really annoys the um, it really annoys the rental company staff, but drive your car around the parking lot, left turns, right turns, left turns while braking, right turns while braking, and listen for any noises. Check the tires for nails and sidewall nicks, and do not leave the lot if you think there might be the slightest mechanical thing wrong with the car. Get a different one. Burbank Airport, I traded three separate cars in because they were making horrible noises and I just you don't want to break down at night at this you know in the middle of nowhere it's just not safe um common scams uh these are the common scams are the flat tire you know where the guy where the people are like driving beside you and they're pointing to your tire you pull over you get out you check your tire they clean out you know they clean out your front seat your purse your backpack um, as much as they can grab. So, uh, you know, watch out for that. Flyers on the windshield, same thing. Sometimes they'll, they'll get like really sticky flyers and and um, when you get to the car, you've unlocked it, you've put stuff in, maybe you've gotten something to like help remove it and they'll come in the other side and, you know, pull stuff, whatever they can get out of the front seat. Um, and the, the gas station distraction. I am from Los Angeles. So I always, when I get out, and I go to pump my gas, I get out, I lock, I, you know, make sure that the gas thing's open. I lock my door when I'm standing there because, you know, they just need to come in really low on the side of the car that you can't see, open the door, grab your stuff and run. So be very careful and, and, and really diligent um, when you're in the vehicle. Uh, lost luggage. I'm not going to go into this for the interest of time. This was actually part of how to prepare for any disaster. Um, it is a disaster, but you can look at this, these things later. Stolen belongings, passport, credit cards, cash, um, your embassy, your credit card company, um, and travel insurance in that order can usually help with that. This is why you've left printed copies of your passport um, and left them with somebody that you trust. The embassy can actually help you get that replaced um, insurance company to credit, and they can also help you get some emergency cash 
if necessary. Always leave at least one backup card, either a credit card or a cash card or both. Um, in the hotel safe or 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 stashed somewhere, um, ha have a reserve uh, and carry carry them separately um, or keep them separately. And always report the loss at the local police station, even if it's you know kind of minimum, because you're going to need the police report for filing any kind of a claim. Um, travel delay is not going to go into this. Illness and other emergencies, that's travel insurance and trip interruption, natural disaster. Um, Medjet Horizon actually covers that. Uh, travel insurance does to a certain extent as well. Um, stay informed. Um, like I'm going, I'm going to Iceland and there's all these volcanoes erupting them. There always are, but um, they seem to be a little bit more concerned about it. And so I, I literally have been checking it every five days. Um, and I'm not even, I'm, I'm not going till May, but just be aware of things that are going down um, with that. And again, like downloading the Smart Traveler app and putting your dates in or, or even putting it in now will allow you to monitor that. Keep phones, um, devices and backup batteries fully charged at all times. Don't, you know, just don't, don't let them all run down because if the electricity does go down in an emergency, you don't want to be caught flat butted. Uh, the airline, the local embassy, and your insurance company and programs like Medjet Horizon can help get you to um, to safety. So have these numbers pre-programmed in your phone. When in doubt, get out. If you choose to cut, um, if you do choose to cut, I can't tell you how many, especially with hurricanes, um, people think it's going to be fine. They think it's going to be fine. They think it's going to be fine. And and then it's not. And by that time, it's too late because there's no aircraft that can go in. There's no um, there's no recourse except shelter in place. Um, so, you know, when in doubt, get out. If you choose to cut your trip short, keep all copies of all the warnings, especially any government issued warnings for use with trip interruption and trip cancellation claims. Some common scams and how to avoid them. These are fun. Pickpockets, watch out for the bump and lift in crowds, a spilled drink, and don't leave your phone on the table. Um, so many people put their phone out on the table and then somebody will trip onto the table with a newspaper or something. And in the mayhem, you don't really think about it. Uh, that phone has disappeared under that magazine, under that newspaper. Just be really careful, um, especially in tourist locations. This one's this is the one that scares me the most. Um, fake police officers. It's a common scam in big cities. Uh, there's frequently a setup. Either they'll you know offer you drugs or accuse you of using counterfeit money at the last door, and then some officers rush over, flash, flash some fake badges, and want to see your ID um, or see your wallet. Uh, never just hand over your wallet or your passport. Ask for their ID. Offer to go with them to the station or to call the police to confirm. Um, who they are or, you know, oh, my passport's in the hotel safe. Can you escort me to the hotel and I'll give it to you? Chances are they're going to take off. Also really good to familiar, so familiarize yourself with uniforms and badges of the local police at the destinations that you're going. It's really easy to look those up online. Broken taxi meter per passenger charges, just, you know, very common at train stations. I Somebody tried to pull this one on me near the Eiffel Tower, um, the per person charge when it's not. So just, you know, know what the taxi rules are. Um, and, and if they tell you that and, and, and they want to insist on it, just get out, get a different cab. It's not going to free bracelet, flower, free anything. It's not free. Um, and if you resist their demand for payment, they make a scene, never let anybody hand you anything or put anything on your body. Um, ATM card scanner, uh, and pin peeper. Um, you know, there's a lot of, it's very easy with these scanners. They just need to get next to you. Um, my son's card keeps getting thumped in New York city. It, it's really irritating, but, um, they can read the card. And so what they'll do is kind of get up close or, or, you know, tell you that they know a different, um, ATM that doesn't have fees and they're the whole time they're scanning your card and then they're going to stand there and they're going to watch your pin number. Then they're going to go home, make the fake card, know your PIN number and empty out your account. So protect your PIN visibly at all times and just be really wary of people coming up to you at the ATM machine. Fake front desk call. I don't know anybody that this has actually happened to, but I have heard about it. Um, your hotel phone rings uh, and it's the front desk needing to confirm your card because the deposit didn't go through. Go down to the front desk. Don't give anybody credit card information over the phone. Um, 
you researched your destination, you, you know, got the smart traveler app um, and, 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 and local country, you learned all the emergency, you did everything right and still things happen. Uh, know who to call. The embassy, this is what the embassy can do for you. They may help citizens in a major crisis such as natural disaster, civil unrest. They can help if you're robbed or assaulted by contacting family, connecting you to resources and updating you on the status of um, your case. Uh, if you are arrested, ask the authorities to notify the embassy as soon as possible. They can visit you in jail, advise you on how local criminal justice process works and recommend local attorneys who speak English. This happens, you know, we cover wrongful detention for a reason. It does happen. So know what you're going to do. Um, your insurance carrier can help you find flights out in the instance of natural disaster, political unrest. They can help you with lost or stolen passports mm -hmm. and credit cards, especially if it means that you can't continue your trip. Keep in mind that um, if any similar events like natural disasters or terrorism or civil unrest has happened within the last 30 days of purchasing your poly, it may be considered a known risk and not covered for interruption, cancellation, or evacuation assistance. So again, really a good idea to track what's going on in the destination and, and make some calculated decisions. Um, keep in mind that things may not be covered if they're not specifically named or are specifically included, uh, excluded. Always read your policy very carefully before departing. It does if it doesn't cover what you um, what you need, you can usually add to it or refund it within a certain time frame and purchase a policy that actually does work better for you. I'm going to have a, a an insurance expert come on for the Q and A um, a little bit later. Uh, so anybody with questions on insurance specific, um, she'll be she'll be here to answer that. Uh, as far as Metro Horizon, our security response membership, the things that are covered are violent crime. If you're the victim of a violent crime in a foreign country, um, I would not wish walking through that process on anybody, um, especially if you've been traumatized or, you know, like seriously assaulted. Uh, if we cover disappearance, um, somebody for your family to call. Um, if you just disappear again, please check in at regular in, at scheduled interviews. I mean, intervals, uh, terrorism, big issue right now, political threat that includes riots, demonstrations, um, civil unrest, kidnapping for ransom, blackmail and extortion, natural disaster. We had a pandemic right before the pandemic. That was a lot of fun. Um, we had people stuck all over the world and they were um, extremely grateful to have somebody else dealing with all of that information of when the countries are opening up, what flights are going to be available, what the, you know, what the U.S. government was doing, what the airlines were doing. It was one guy described it as 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 like drinking from the fire hose and the water is filthy, dirty. They were very happy to have somebody else dealing with all of that on their behalf. Um, wrongful detention and hijacking, those are the things. Um, response can range from expert advice, 24-7 security line, to security extraction, if that's what's necessary. While these are defined covered events, you can, unlike travel insurance, call anytime you feel threatened. Um, I, th we've had so many, I can't even begin to explain um, how valuable having 24-7 expert worldwide security people to call um, if, if, if you feel threatened, what a peace of mind that is. Um, and unlike travel insurance uh, with Metro Horizon, there doesn't need to be government issued mandates or hard trigger thresholds met before, you know, advice and the teams are available to you. There's a long, long list of do's and don'ts, absolutely impossible to cover in what are we at 630, like 35 minutes already. And I'm sure people have lots of questions. I haven't been looking at the chat, but, um, you know, the, the biggest things are, you know, avoid crowds whenever possible. And if you are in a crowd, just head on a swivel, um, really watch what's going on. Uh, even, you know, Athens, Rome, Paris, all of them rife with pickpockets, um, you know, South of France has been having um, a lot of demonstrations, some of them, you know, really scary. Uh, avoid public transportation in areas with known problems. Um, try not to travel long distance or arrive to your destination late at night um, and memorize where you're going. Just don't, you know, don't just rely on Apple Maps. Give a, get a visual picture before you, you know, take off to go anywhere. Get a visual picture of at least 
the general direction that you're going to. So you don't have your nose in Apple Maps the whole time. A sure indication that you're that you're a, a tourist, and B really unsafe because you're not watching what you're what you know what's going on around you. Password protect all your devices. Use use a VPN. Avoid using free or public Wi-Fi. And again, do not use the public USB charging stations unless you've got one of those you know um, data disabling devices. Don't wear flashy clothes or jewelry, and um, use extra caution while traveling solo. I know those are are very, very basic, but sometimes you gotta go back to the basics to remember, you know, safety first. Um, the number one do is though, protect yourself. Research, advanced preparation and assistance protection. Know who you're going to call and what they can do for you. It's the, the, the number one thing that you can do. And that concludes my presentation. <laughs> hey. Thank you so much, Sherry. That was that was awesome. So much and so much great information. I was honestly taking notes over here. I need to get one of those USB data blockers. Um, they're I'm, so like, they're so about, good. Yeah, that's and that's like you said, such a small little thing that you can do to protect yourself. Um, so that's great. Um, all right, there's a lot of questions that I've been compiling as you've been going. So. Let's just dive right in and everyone can feel free to uh, keep putting your questions in the chat and I will um, hop on over there once I've gone through um, the questions that we have. Um, all right, so a few people, I'm gonna try to kind of compile them together. Um, a couple of people talked about uh, electronics, like how do you keep electronics, uh, like expensive electronics safe? Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess that kind of goes with a lot of what you're saying about keeping your head on swivel and stuff like that. But um, do you have any specific advice on on electronics? Because I know that's pretty much people are very concerned about that losing yeah. your phone. Yeah, leave them. I mean, number one, leave them home. Password protect everything, and that's why I love the carabiners. Um, every every backpack I have. Not only zips, it zips, it ties, it ties like five different ways, five different times, and it is alternately physically attached to my body. Um, just be careful. I recently, uh, for the first time ever, um, went on a 10 day trip and didn't take my laptop. That was, it was, I had huge separation anxiety, but I just dealt with it on my phone because the phone is portable you could keep it on your body at all times i just if you can leave it home then just leave it home um hotel safes obviously you know are nice but i i've had a lot of friends that had things disappear out of hotel safes um i will say the nicer of a hotel you're staying in the less likely um, things are to disappear out of your room in the luggage portion that I kind of skipped through. Um, you know, the debate on to lock or not to lock your luggage. Uh, you can only use TSA approved locks anyways, which means they've got a master key. So if anybody wants, if anybody wants to get into your luggage, they will. Um, I will occasionally use a lock uh, just, you know, for in the hotel room or if you're, you know, going on a bus tour. Um, and, and you're going to have your luggage with you, I will lock it because um, it just takes a little bit more effort. Um, but the number one thing mm -hmm. that you can do to keep it safe is leave it home. Mm -hmm. That's that you answered another insure question it. someone had, which and is, or, which is and, and, and or insure it because, you know, not insurance, like the, the travel insurance policies, you can add on an electronics rider. Um, Laura can talk more about that. Did she, is she, did we let her in yet? Um, I'm not sure. Laura, um, everyone can come in. So Laura, if you're here, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. Hi, Laura. Hey there. Laura. Hey, Laura, Laura is the um, insurance desk manager at Brownell Travel and my go-to when it comes to answering specific questions about travel insurance and what it does and doesn't cover. And correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, uh, travel insurance will cover electronics, but if you have some serious electronics that you're taking, you're probably going to have to have a writer that specifically covers them. 
Yeah, they have a limitation on the amount that they will pay for electronics. Can you add can you add to that? Like if you have stuff that you're really concerned about, but you absolutely need to take got a lot of I, I, it, it would no, it would need to go on a homeowner's insurance. Got it. Okay. Great. Um, so I guess I'll or just a credit I'll card. Ask the question. You know, credit card may have some coverage as well. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I actually did get um coverage for phone that it was my fault but it, when I was traveling in Brazil dropped it on the cobblestones and broke the screen and my credit card <laughs> travel insurance covered it so it's good to have all of these different things you can rely, rely on and that's actually a question that someone asked which is like um and so this is a perfect question for you Laura I think um what would be a good uh travel insurance to go to work in tandem with MedJet because they do you know obviously cover yeah, different things yeah, there are many carriers out there that really, how I put it, is that your travel insurance is for the necessities of your travel, and your MedJet is really the icing on the cake for your travel. So your insurance pays for your hospitalization and any costs that you would have while traveling, but then if you're admitted into a hospital and you want to come back home, MedJet is what you would want to have as a membership. Uh, as Sherry said earlier, it really determines on the necessity of that person being transported back home um, and the severity of their illness. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't yeah. have that. If you're hospitalized and you need continued hospitalization, we just move you to your hospital at home. You only ever pay your membership fee. Um, there's no bills, no claim forms. We handle all the arrangements and cover all the costs. And, you know, right. we just did one. We have a travel and leisure story out like a later <laughs> late, late last year. Uh, it was our most expensive transport ever. ever. Um, it was a travel advisor who slipped in her hotel room in Malawi, broke her hip. And yes. that was almost $200,000 that we paid to get her home. Um uh -huh. Yeah, it can be expensive. And she's like, I don't want a hip replacement in Malawi. I, I, she was very grateful. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So answered that. Um, a couple of people were asking about cruises specifically. Like, does MedJet cover cruises? Should you still use the Smart Traveler app if you're cruising? Like, are there any specific pieces of safety advice you would have um, on cruises? Safety on cruises, that's a whole other thing, but pretend that it's a crowded, you know, pretend that it's a crowded tourist area. Um, generally a lot less criminals on it. Uh, they're not, you know, <laughs> they're not there to prey on you. Um, but, you know, one of the, uh, we just put a web page up actually about what actually happens if you get sick or hurt on a cruise. Um, I think the expectation is sometimes that like that travel insurance or a membership is going to come like, oh, who's going to get me off the 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 cruise ship? But um, they're they're pretty well equipped uh, medically. And if your injury, usually they'll wait until they port. Um, if it's so urgent to get you to a hospital ashore, they will that, you know, it's up to the captain and the ship's doctor to um, port at the nearest port. Like they may revise their itinerary. And if it's if it's something so serious it requires an airlift, it 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 that's the purview of the Coast Guard. Those are very specific um qualified airlifts uh off of ships because it depends on the water conditions, the weather conditions, whose whose waters you're in, which Coast Guard that responsibility would be for. So, you know, you should understand like what act what happens um if you get sick or hurt. And as far as security. Um, goes, you know, uh, use the Smart Traveler app and punch in, you know, some people do really long cruises um, to to destinations that they don't feel comfortable if they're taking an excursion. Um, that That's what it's good for. But, you know, the cruise ship, you're already registered on that. They've got a manifesto. They know if somebody doesn't show back up on the ship, like they're going to go looking for you. Um, there's roll call every morning, make sure nobody fell off um, overnight. Uh, so you're pretty, you're pretty safe on a cruise. Just, you know, excursions like you guys, and know what happens if you're sick. Mm. So it sounds like you guys would cover cruising then. 
We do, um, only, but again, you know, they're going to take you to the nearest port hospital and that mm. could be Jamaica, that could be, um, you know, somewhere in Turkey, that could be depending on which cruise you're in. And once they get you to the nearest acceptable hospital, you're stuck there. And we would come and, mm. you know, we would make sure that you got moved to your hospital at home. We just aren't going to, you know, medevac you off of a ship. Nobody does that, but the Coast Guard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I guess while we're talking a bit about coverage, um, people have like some specific questions, like what age, up to what age does MedJet offer memberships? Are you just for Americans? Do you cover Canadians or other countries? Residents of the U.S. and Canada and Mexico, basically North American residents um, can join. Uh, under age 75, we you just sign up um online you can sign up the day before you go we don't ask any health questions so it does cover pre-existing health conditions over age 75 is only it's a diamond membership and you have to um we can we send out the information we do ask about six health questions um at that point but we do have memberships for age 70 75 to 84 is diamond membership and then 84 plus is platinum great awesome um okay let's see here um cool we're covering a lot of them Ooh. someone oops okay um i thought someone was talking. um someone's asking if you had advice for you talked a little bit about solo travelers she was asking Sapuga about solar solo older female travelers like uh safety wise um if you have anything specific to talk about there Honestly, all the same, you know, all the same protocols. I think, you know, the the be really wary of strangers who, you know, seemingly get a little too close or a little too friendly and start picking about, you know, like, oh, are you here with your family? Um, there are so many really great um group travels and you know, older solo female travel groups, solo female travel groups. Um, there is a safety in numbers, uh, you know, and 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 I hear really good things about, um, you know, some of the female only or, you know, age group specific um, travel groups. So I would highly recommend looking into that if I mean, I love traveling by myself. It just I, I like a lot of alone time. <laughs> Um, and I just make sure that I'm staying in an, in an area. I'll pay a little bit more to stay in a nicer area. Uh, I, and, and you just really watch it, um, you know, spend the extra dollars to stay in a nice hotel, uh, and, yeah. and one that, that you are confident has, um, you know, good security response and good security protocol protocols, key, you know, a, a room key operated elevators and, you know, be wary in the hallways, uh, and always check those joining doors because that was terrifying. <laughs> Drunk man yeah, stuck in my room late at night. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I travel a lot by myself as well. And uh, yeah, it's just about a lot of the things that you already talked about, just being extra cautious and um, taking extra precautions. I traveled in Brazil by myself last year and um, a lot of people, you know, are like, oh my gosh, Brazil. But I just took extra precautions, you know, at home, at, getting back at night, just took an Uber, a taxi or whatever. And, you know, about being, taking those extra steps and, and enjoying yourself. So those are, that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. um, and someone's just asking on the other side of things, like what's the youngest age that you guys um, offer memberships for? Well, um, we have a lot of families that send kids, you know, minors uh, on vacations or minors off to study abroad. Um, in which case they would purchase a family membership. And even though the child is traveling alone, they're covered under that family membership. For an individual membership, then um, they would have to be 18, um, 18 plus, like an adult to be an individual. But yeah, you can absolutely cover kids. Individual memberships annual start at like 315, family memberships are 425, and it covers two adults and up to five dependent children. So um you know, and they don't all have to be traveling together. The memberships cover each individual member in that family membership anytime they're traveling, regardless of whether they're with the parents or not. Great. Um, 
We have another question for Laura. I don't know if you'd be comfortable. Uh, list, Everybody like, asks some this of your, question. <laughs> your favorite insurance companies. I will also say we have we have a ton of articles on travel insurance on Nomadic Mat. So I'm going to drop a link because we have reviews of like a ton of different yeah. things. Because it really depends really on what on. you're looking. Yeah, it depends on what you're looking for. Because there's you know there's different people have different needs and what you're willing to pay and stuff. So I'm just going to drop a link to all of that. And that will definitely keep you guys busy uh, reading. But I don't know if you have anything you want to share, Laura. Well, you know, we at Brownell, we do have uh, three providers. One of the things that we always try to say as a hosting company, that they look at your losses by what you sell. So it's really an actuarial kind of thing. So that's why we have limited to three. And each of them have their own niche, you know, so it's really like you're saying, it's 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 kind of a research, you know, if you have a family with a lot of children, that could be one company that has a better price. Or if you have elderly people, uh, there could be another company that has a better price. So it really does vary on uh, the company and how they have set up their pricing. And I'm assuming also whether people are going for like a week or two, or maybe like, you know, some people are on multiple month trips. So those, yeah, that's very yeah, different. Yeah, the only uh, the only change that would happen would be if you're traveling more than 30 days. There are companies that do charge like a $7 per day over 30 days. But other than that, it's the same policy that you would be purchasing. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. Um, all right. Okay. We have some, yeah, more like specific uh, questions. I think these are great too. Someone asked, is it a good idea to have multiple IDs while you're traveling? Um, on the, yeah, on that kind of safety. Uh, you mean like driver's license, <laughs> multiple personalities? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I answered this, but I thought I would answer you. I, what I, I carry my passport and my license and I just carry, you know, carry my license on me and my passport in my room. So exactly. I don't know if you do anything different. I do that. And then I also have on, um, I, I have global entry. So I have both the card and, you know, like the, the it's, it's connected to your passport. So there's all different ones, but honestly, you know, the passport is the thing that you need. Um, driver's license if you're going to be driving um, and also just for flashing around if you're if you're going places that need ID. That's why it is just urgent that you keep copies in your suitcase as well as leave copies of your passport um, at home. And, you know, I have copies of every single person um, in my family. I've got their passports on my phone. Like you can't have, you know, too many securely kept copies of it because if you lose it, you got to get it replaced um and it's it's not yeah. fast and it's not fun <laughs> yeah here's another great question um talking about traveling within the u.s so what if if something happens and you get injured while you're traveling with, within the u.s would medjet relocate you from one state to your home state like how does that work domestically uh, it does. It's worldwide. So um, anytime you travel more than 150 miles from your home, everybody buys it for the big international trip. And then every year, 50% of our transports are domestic. Like they've come back from the big international trip. They get whacked by a snowboarder. They slip and fall at a wedding. They have a car accident um, and, and, and we get them moved home. Um, it's anytime you're more than 150 miles from your home, um, you know, traveling, then you are eligible. That's why we have so many corporate um, clients that, you know, they've got business travelers everywhere and they want to be able to get them moved home um, if they have, you know, an accident while traveling for business. Uh, it can be just as unsettling to be stuck in a hospital three states away with nobody around you, nobody be, to be your patient advocate, you know, away from your family, um, as it can be halfway away, like halfway around the world. So it does cover that. Great, great. Um, okay, someone's asking about talking about the data blocking um, thing. <laughs> Could you explain what that is again? And also, um, 
do you need data blockers like in your hotel room? Is that something like uh, I, I'm seeing a few questions that keep coming up yeah. about hotel room security, like within the hotel room. Yeah. The safest is always to just plug into the outlet and then, you know, to, to use your own charging block to plug into. If you're going to plug the USB or your C and I, I don't, I don't, I only use the USB ones. I need to look and see if they've got C's because I know that, you know, like um, if you're going to plug into the lamp in the hotel room, use the data blocker. Anytime you're plugging just this thing into something that you don't know, you are not only transmitting electricity into your phone, you could potentially two-way be syncing with those two data prongs. There's four of them, two are data, two are power. What the, what the, it's called a juice jack preventer. Um, and you can find them on Amazon. There's tons of them. That's where I pulled the picture from earlier because I didn't have pictures of the ones that I actually have. Uh, and it just, it, 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 it disables the two data prongs because it only has the electric prongs. And that's the way it works. It's just an adapter that that cuts off the data. They're great. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, just look up juice jack or like juice jack prevention or juice jacking prevention or data blockers for USB. Um, okay, a few last questions. We're almost at time, but this is good. I think we've gotten to almost almost everyone. Um, let's see. Um, what someone someone's asking, what kind of insurance covers a trans transport of a corpse? <laughs> oh my gosh, um, you guys, right? Yeah. yeah, it's called transport of mortal remains, and um, it I knew is. There was a, I, I couldn't I remember the better word for it. I'm it sorry. It's the saddest. It's the saddest one. Um, yeah. Do, but honestly, you know, I would not wish trying to rest a loved one's body out of a morgue in a foreign country and dealing with all the red tape on anyone. Um, I've also, you know, heard that, that, you know, they can sometimes set their own price, right? If they wow. feel, yeah, exactly. So it's, it, it, it is really nice to have somebody dealing with that. I just don't wish that on a grieving family at all. So yeah, Laura, and, and there well, is the coverage guys, within insurance policies. Yeah, most of them have transfer of mortal yeah. reasons. Right, right. Do you pay for that? Do you pay for that up front, and then they reimburse you? Do they arrange for it? They arrange for it. Oh, good. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I like something every time Laura's on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is great. Everyone here, you're getting like so m many more than working your bargain for in a good way. More information than you even expected. <laughs> Thank you, Laura, for, for joining us. Um, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I think that covers uh, pretty much everything. Um, Let's see, let me just make sure, go through my my list again here. And if anyone, um, I've missed anyone, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me or um, Sherry. Um, we're gonna send out a an, an recording in the next couple of days, if not tomorrow. Um, so then you'll be able to have everything. Uh, someone asked, what are your thoughts on insurance through credit cards? Um, we have an article on that. <laughs> we have a ton of, like, I, I I direct everyone to the link I shared in the, in the, uh, up in a little bit. I'll, I'll drop it again. Um, Cause there's probably a lot in there that I think people will find, find helpful so that we can stick to time since. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that's about it. Let's let's make sure you yeah, just saying thank you. So thanks everyone for joining us on a Tuesday night. It is Tuesday, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't know. I don't even know <laughs> where that came from. But um, and thank you so much, Sherry, and also for Laura for joining us and sharing your expertise. I I know I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else learned a lot. I'm seeing in the chat that they are. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, everyone, Great. look out for the email us. and. Yeah. All right.
Bye, All right, I'm going to stop the recording and Great. bye, everyone. Thank you.